Australian side is virtually that expected to appear in the second test at Wigan on Saturday. And the Australians, one change, in fact, from the first test would only be in the substitutes. Wally Lewis and Ray Brown taking the 14 and 15 shirts. And for Mal Meninga, it's a memorable return, perhaps, to Hull. He started the tour here with a try and seven goals in the first game. He also got a try and eight goals in the first test at Boothbury Park. This whole side is, of course, the one which took the Challenge Cup final in a replay at Ellen Road last May, and they currently lead the Slalom Lager Championship First Division. They've got everything on their plates tonight. Steve Rogers, the kick-off, and the ball picked up on that far side by Donahara. So it was the suspicion of a knock-on, but uh, now Keith Bridges up to play the ball. Experienced hooker, of course, uh, from Featherstone Rovers and Bradford Northern. Hull in possession again, Bridges the first man, and coming up there was Lee Crooks. Surprising to see Lee Crooks in the whole side tonight because only yesterday he was declared unfit to continue with the Great Britain squad. Lovely kick through. And very good play indeed by the whole loose forward, Mick Crane. Lee Crooks, very popular young favourite here, only 19 years of age. And uh, got a lot to offer this game of rugby league as Lee Crooks, who's in possession once more. Great cheers going up all around there. Now the touch judge on this side is on the field and not surprising, punches being flung left, right and centre. Again, Boyd was in the middle of it and so was Lee Crooks. And the touch judge immediately came to intervene. The referee was on the spot. Gets the original ball back from the crowd. Honest lads here in Hull. The fans of the early birds as they're known. And a crunching tackle by Rod Reddy. Oof! And a fist flung, touch judges on again. Temper's very, very frayed indeed, and that was Paul Rose just swinging an arm at Rod Reddy, who'd made the tackle on him. And what is Mr Holdsworth going to do about it? He's going to give a penalty to Australia. Well, that was fairly obvious. Nothing more. He merely points the finger at Rose. We're trying to get that ball out to growth. Mal Meninga, who's uh, in possession at the moment, it never quite got as far as Eric Groth. Always a roar of expectancy goes up whenever either of those two players has it. Nice work, good play by Proctor. And once more, the touch judge is on, and this is getting quite ludicrous. We've had barely 11 minutes of this game. That's five times the touch judges have been called onto the pitch. Trying to uh, snaffle it away to Kerry Boosted. Five tackles, as Boosted will play the ball back. Sterling's looking for it and gets it. A little kick through, oh, it could be a good one. Oh, it hits the foot of the post, and it's the whole player that... Paul Rose that time, who's uh, done some fine work up front, Paul Rose. He and Crane have been particularly impressive. I thought Rose had been hurt there, he looks to be struggling to get to his feet. Oh, dearie me, and Price and Rose now involved in a real slanging match. And the penalty has been given to the Australians. Oh, it's like a cauldron out here, and uh, one can only uh, wonder why nobody's got sent off. Sterling has got Kenny. Is this the first try? It must surely be for Steve Rogers. The forward. Well, the first run there was uh, by Wayne Proctor. The second one by Crane. There's a real glutton for work tonight. Topless making a good break, getting the ball inside to Steve Evans, who's got tremendous pace. What a roar will go up here if they could get a try. It must have been knocked forward. And then he goes like a bull, and it takes a bull-like tackle to get him down. Sterling trying to work it with Young, almost gets through in the gap. Krilich comes up and led good support, so did Boyd. Legs going a bit there, and Boyd has got a real hot head, tussling, and he's left his opponent down on the ground. And now an interception, has Dean got the legs to go all the way. He's cut back inside, good tackle by Brentnell. And it's Hull who've got the ball.
Price and Crane, the respective number 13s there. And Crane, I must say, has done well. Now then, can Hull get a try? The fullback back inside to right wing O'Hara. Oh, so where is he? Oh, so, so close, Dane O'Hara. A fine run by the fullback Kemble. And Hull really throwing this ball around. Bridges has done well. Dean gets it out now to Evans. Back inside for Luluai. Ducks inside one and two tackles. The Australian defence holds firm for the time being. It's back to six tackles as well. They're besieged at the moment as they swing the ball far wide right. He must pick this one up. And he does. Gets through a tackle too. Gets through two. O'Hara going for the line again. Spirited play this from the whole three quarters. Dean and Toplis really orchestrating everything at the moment. As Rose goes plunging in and is tackled by Sterling. The Aussies won't want to concede a try before half-time. Crooks is coming into the action. Oh, the ball lost momentarily. Or even something stronger, I would think, in the Australian dressing room. They might need it. Here they come. Toplis has got the ball through for Luluai. Luluai might get there himself. Prendeville's the man immediately behind him. What a dramatic finish we could have to the first half. Crooks goes driving in. The tackle by Pierce is a good one. Reddy's there too. Into the gap goes Harrison. Trying to slither over. Still a few yards to go to the line. But Hull really willing to fling this ball about. Crooks once more for fullback Kemble. The Australian tackling there exemplary. But still Hull driving at the line, the little chip through. He's there! It's a try! For Hull, right on the stroke of half-time. And that's a brilliant try from David Topless, which puts... All a bit scruffy out there at the moment. Uh, Sterling tries to bring some semblance of order to it. Now Reddy's gone well. Good running, and Brett Kenny... Oh, the pass wasn't a good one. He was too far behind Meninga, too far ahead of Rodgers, but he's still got possession, Steve Rodgers showing what a good centre is and getting the pass into Peter Sterling. Sterling got two tries at Hulkingston Rovers. If he can get his man in here for Australia, as he has indeed, and Boosted has got the try. And it's out on the Australian side for Sterling. It goes round the blind side. And the penalty given there against Ray Price. I think even John Holds was having a go. They're trying to separate... Rose it was then, coming into it, Toffles here again, the try scorer now Bridges to play the ball and they've got plenty of men out on this right hand side as Luluai goes streaming for it, Kemble tries to get in, Nohara's there now good tackling and the claim is for a try, the referee says that the ball was not grounded properly Penalty to Australia. <laughs> David Topless has had a change of shorts, perhaps to bring him extra luck. He's whiter than white at the moment, unlike the rest of them out there. It's out on the whole side again, and Topless has just got his shorts dirty. And the Australians have the ball. That was uh, Kenny, who was up quickly to get possession for Australia. He's had a quiet match, really, as Brett Kenny. But he was uh, seen to good evidence then. Reddy's fought one tackle off. No, he hasn't. Stuck at it well then, did Crooks. They did by Lulu I Sterling. There could well be a big gap here if Pierce can get the ball away as he does to Meninga, who's off down that touchline. And tackle from Kemble. He's got the ball back inside though to grow. That was brilliant football by the Australians. First of all by Sterling, then by Meninga doing down the touchline. And finally by Eric Groth, who got the touch. So 14 minutes of this second half gone, and the Australians have registered two tries in those 14 minutes. But they're still a point behind, unless Meninga... Now Pierce collared by Topless. Good tackle, that, from the Holt skipper. Sterling has got it through again. Meninga's off on another charge down the touchline. Kicks ahead himself. He's now in a dash with Kemble. And Kemble's there. 
and did well. So Australia retained possession, but that wasn't the slickest handling they've shown on this tour. Sterling, oh, and through the gap, what a tremendous run by Rod Reddy. Very, very good one to him. He's still got it, so uh, Australians might yet get something here. And the ball being flung about all over the place as Pierce gets in. Five tackles gone. And they'd love to get a third try and actually edge in front. Young now driving for the line. Back inside for Sterling. And now for Kenny. Flings it out wide. Meninga, it's picked up by Boosted, who's charging over. And Boosted. Pierce not had the running chances tonight that he's had in previous games. Sterling. Sterling's had a superb second half, he really has. And I think he'll cling on to his test place all right, despite Mortimer's claims. Now Krilic back inside for Reddy. And Reddy still going. He's been superb too. Rogers has growth outside him. Can Rogers get in with his brute strength? He can. Eric Growth and the Australians leap in the air. They know that that could well have sealed it. Growth. Or growth. Well, it's been a very hard, bruising, competitive game as this one, with Hull giving as good as they've got, and coming again. Price is tackled, and a good one. And it was on Crane, who has absolutely been outstanding for Hull. Toffless. We really are playing out time now, and Australia are going to maintain this record. This, along with the matches at Wigan and Bradford Northern, the closest in terms of score, but it wasn't really until six minutes from time that that third try from Eric Growth clinched the victory, which is now confirmed by the sound of the hooter. Eric Growth goes off, having scored two fine second-half tries, and with one coming from the other winger, Kerry Boosted, Australia register a 13 points to seven victory. But it really was a marvellous performance by Hull. The crowd are singing them off the pitch. And after that, the hardest game you've ever played in. Well, if not the hardest, one of the hardest. It definitely was hard. We set out in the first 20 minutes to hit them with everything we had, try and put them off the game. When we got the ball, put a few chips over the top, try and stop them rushing up at us all the time. And I think it works. I think that's the only way you can beat them. It's the way to break them, you know. They must be very frustrating to play against because whereas you basically have jobs during the day and then come and play rugby yeah. for fun, they're full time, aren't they? Yeah, that's where they've got it over us. They're super fit out there compared with us. We train two hours on a Tuesday and Thursday, pouring with rain, snow, they're training the sunshine all day, no jobs, they're all sponsored. That's your answer, that, isn't it? Well, really? that is, until we do that over here, I don't think we've got a chance against them. So you don't see any hope of Great Britain in the second test? Well, there's always hope, but I think they'll have to approach it like we did tonight. Hit them with everything they've got the first 20 minutes and take it from there. Mal, I don't think there's any question about it. That's probably the hardest game you've had. Uh, definitely the hardest. Um, we came here tonight and expecting a hard one and we got one. Were you worried at all at any stage you might just get beaten? Oh, no, we're always worried, you know, especially when they went 7-0 up at half time, you know. But we were playing well at the time. But they were playing a little bit better, but... Um, you know, the second half we come out a bit fired and you know, we got the results, which was the main thing. There uh, must have been some strong words in the dressing room at half-time, I imagine, because you really did come out to, uh, and take the game oh, by the scruff. No, there wasn't really harsh words, but uh, we, were, we were playing fairly well at that stage and we didn't have much possession in the first half. And uh, Hull had, was, you know, had us camped down our line all the time and uh, you know, it was a very ch clever chip kick they got the, the score to try. And um, we came back and uh, that proves our character and uh, we so we can continue you know, keep on winning. How much does it mean to you the fact you've now set up a record as the most successful kangaroo touring team, winning the first 12 matches? Well, you know, it's a tre tremendous thing to be part of, you know. It's a, you know we got a lot of criticism when the team was first picked over in Australia and um, you know, we're, we're very pleased that we, we did break the record and just um, you know, hope we can set a new record and win all the games over here in England.